should people look at financial advisors as a risk mitigation or more like a gain? Because this is one thing that's sort of playing in the back of my mind because I get insurance is risk mitigation, right? Yeah. Superannuation is planning for the future, which is, hey, build, like, build. 60, 65, like retire. Yep. Great. Now I've got like a little bit of a safety net and happy days. Like it, from what you've been saying around sort of things that you specialize in, it sounds like it's a bit of that and then planning for the future. Or should we also think of it like a gain game, yeah. which is great. Like we can think about growth. We can think about investing here and there, or is it more just trying to put like nest eggs away? Hey, you've got this money. Like let's go and do this strategy for estate planning and things like that. Hmm. Uh, great, great question. It's, it's both. It's to build wealth and create wealth. So, um, uh, and protect wealth really, because yeah. you- I'll take all three. I'll yeah. All three then. <laughs> no, I'm good with that. <laughs> so uh, early on part of your life when you're building and working um, throughout your 30s, 40s and 50s, you are basically creating wealth. You're squealing away money for your retirement at the same token, you're also sort of trying to add on assets, whether it be in the form of property or savings or what have you. Um, and underneath that, you've got these insurance structure strategies in place. So should something happen, that they will catch you. And there's no financial consequence to your family or to your kids in the event that you're not here today. I like that. And I'm going to put in one more question <laughs> just because I can, totally because I can. Um, so I'm curious, right? What happens if I disagree? Because I, I, to Charlie's point before, like a lot of financial advisors might not refer to property, but they want me to invest my money. So they might say, hey, shares and things like that. And this has been one of my cautions because- yeah. I want people around me who are going to advise me for the best returns and the greatest things. So yep. I know thanks to Full Stack Business Owner Podcast and some people that we've, that Charlie, you and I listen to quite intently, that I have some preconceived opinions around different assets. Like, is that, how do you, how do you perceive that? Is it what a financial planner says kind of goes, or is this something that is like, great, we're willing to adapt into other strategies for the greater growth? Well, this is spicy. Are you asking, is this a commodity where financial planners offer a lot of the same advice, but then, or is it like chefs where it's like they've all got their different flavors and styles? Yeah. Exactly where I'm going to. Because I don't, I don't want to sit there and pay someone for advice that I sit there and say, thanks for the advice. No. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, I, w- I want to sit there and say, like, hey, what are the best vessels for us to grow with? And I'm just yeah. curious because that's been one of my sort of pushbacks of going, I'm pretty good at this game, but yeah. I do, I, I don't, I do want someone to check. Yep. against, but I don't want to push back against them because that makes yep. no sense. 100% government bonds grant. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get my 3% interest. All right, let's yeah. have Ray answer. The two much shit talk from us. <laughs> so th- think of a financial planner as your sounding board. Um, and look, um, it property has definitely got a play into that space. So it what it boils down to is your personal goals and objectives and where do you see yourself investing money and, and where do you see yourself um, where your personal growth is going to come out. So we, we, we do work with property um, all the time. We, we do refer people for um, to property advisors all the time. So there is definitely a room and a play for advisors to not only um, seek a better outcome for the client using property, but also other vessels. So it's, it's, a, it's, it's a merit of assets that we look at, not just superannuation, investments, insurances, and to your point, Charlie, bonds. Okay. All right. So to, to go deeper than that, if I went to 10 financial planners, let's pretend variety of yep. states, how different would yep. the advice be that I get between mm-hmm. the 10? Is like, cause It'd be very different. Yeah. Interesting. So this on. is the chef thing. Because my understanding yep. is like ASIC is the governing body here and like they've got rules, so to speak, that yep. financial planners have to adhere to. Just like I imagine yep. chefs probably shouldn't give people uh, food poisoning, right? There's probably like hygiene <laughs> standards they should adhere to. Yeah, But to that point is like, I just really, again, want to understand the difference here is like, what would be some differences to look for in a financial Mm -hmm. planner to see if one is particularly more suited to myself or to Grant or or where does that sit? Love that. Uh, (laughs) Guys, what it comes down to is the skill set. The big thing um, that I would uh, encourage people to do is look at their qualifications what do they work in? What have they specialized in before? Uh, what is the experiences around estate planning, tax planning, financial planning? Can they provide you a holistic look at uh, the, your situation? Oh, can um, I suppose so you those are, uh, I'd love to ask sure. some pointy ones. Is sure. business owner and non-business owner a good qualification? So like the idea is like, uh, I, I believe business owners are different to employees, not better, 100%. different. Um, yeah. 
are financial planners more suited to work with business owners or non-business owners? Would that be one of the key things I would look for? Yep. Yep. And, and that would be a big part of it. So have they got prior experience working with business owners? And I think that's the key aspect of it because they need to understand their aspirations, not only from the personal point of view, but also what they want for their business. And most of the times, um, that aspiration, personal aspiration they've got will also carry through in their business. Okay. Next one on this list here, because uh, I actually have a few to understand. Amazing. If you're someone who's going to inherit a large amount of money versus not, like I, I've built from scratch and I, I believe, Grant, you're in the same uh, boat here. I'm not waiting on millions from mum and dad. Hmm. Would that play a role in how things are going to get passed to you or is that something to consider? Is someone that has kids and wants to pass things to kids in a certain way another factor? Like is there anything else? Even income level is like a high income earner, financial planner, different to someone who deals with someone on average incomes. Sorry, Charlie, repeat that question again. I uh, will repeat I this one. It was, a it was a very low. Oh, Don't load you too hard. All right. <laughs> so I'm gonna go with, I'll go with this one here because I think this is the most prominent. Um, so we've yeah. said that business owners versus non-business owners or employees, like likely you want to work with a financial planner that has experience with business owners. What about income level? If you're someone who makes a million dollars a year, is the financial advice you would want to get different than someone who makes a hundred thousand dollars a year? Absolutely. Um, your tax planning will be completely different from you earning a million dollars to to perhaps you earning a hundred thousand um, dollars. You're looking at tax structurings in a different way. You're looking at uh, investments in a different way. You're looking at uh, insurances in a different way. So every aspect of that uh, nurturing piece or the um, the advice piece will change based on the income that you do have. And then the next one I kind of slammed in there just to be a little bit more. It's actually, I did a poor job of asking that question, Ray, so I apologize for that. That's right. what, we're talking about estate planning now, and I've mentioned the idea, like, if someone has a wealthy family and things are going to get passed yep. to them, and in conjunction with maybe they've built some wealth and want to pass it on to their kids, um, yep. would that play a role, the differences, the financial planner someone would want to use? Absolutely. First thing first you would look at is going, how is that wealth being passed on? Is that passed via insurances? Is that passed via um, uh, perhaps a property? Because there's taxes involved on those part of the benefits. So, so like I gave you an example earlier, if that was an insurance payout um, to the son or the daughter and they're over the age of 20, that there'd be a complete different tax ruling if they're under the age of 18 or um, is it going to spouses, going to ex-partner. So the estate planning piece will will, will play a massive role in, uh, on tax minimization strategies um, and, and how, how, does the, how, how does the assets get distributed. Okay. And then last one before, I know I'm being a hog, but I really want to know this. Have I missed yeah. any? So I've mentioned the idea if you're going to use a financial planner, business owner, income level, and then also, let's say, uh, estate planning uh, reasons. Is there any yep. other factors in that would have someone decide if a financial planner is the right one for them or not for them? For estate planning, specifically for businesses, look, buy-sell agreement is a, another big consideration in partnership or equity in a business. It is very important for a business owners. The death of a key person or partner could potentially destroy a business or force remaining partners to sell if an agreement is not in place. Can you use an example of that? Certainly. So if I if um, if if I was to pass away today and um, uh, my partner Ricky um, was to acquire the asset, he has to pay my wife out. Now he doesn't necessarily want my wife has got no financial planning experience to be sitting in the office and providing advice. Yeah. Or dictating the terms of the business. See, I, I actually went through that. I had a business partner who were one thirds each who passed away, uh, and so all of his equity actually went to his wife. And so his wife is currently operating that that organisation. Um, just yeah. because she wanted to sort of continue it on in legacy, which uh, yeah. yeah, so I've I've been through that. That was that was quite smooth, but yeah, I, I could see how that could get really bad. Completely, absolutely. Like imagine if you're a surgeon, right? And you like if you have a series of vending machines or a laundry mat, ma maybe it could work, right? If it's a let's yeah. say a low tech or a low touch business, but if you're someone with specialized yep. knowledge um, and like a heart surgeon, not sure you want your partner jumping in unless they were had experience or qualified in the next ones. Correct. I am. I do have a couple of questions, and I'm going to piggyback off on that, Charlie, because Certainly. I think that I think this is one. Or well, these are all self-serving questions that help me, but I'm sure sort of other analytical human beings uh, or business owners that are listening to this probably relate to it. The Australian Financial Services License Number. Like, are there different types of like licenses? Because one of the sort of the views that I've had, or the biases that I've had, 
is, okay, great. There are different types of licenses, which means if you have one out of X amount of licenses, you have a hammer and everything starts looking like a nail, right? Should we be looking (laughs) out for different types of licenses, a multitude of licenses, things like that? Grant, you should only buy property uh, off the plan, right? <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, uh, it's unit, getting uh, spicy. Unit, uh, just, just <laughs> apartments in CBDs, Charlie. That's all it is. <laughs> <laughs> Um, guys, to answer that question, yes, absolutely. There's different um, type of licenses, but I think it'd be very hard for a consumer to or, or business owner to go um, that I'm looking for this specific license. Um, I would go back to the earlier point we talked about, uh, looking for the individual experiences of that advisor uh, and where they can give you advice on it. And does that suit your needs? Uh, and do they have the expertise to provide advice on that side rather than looking for the AFSL? Um, yes, granted, there are AFSLs that will uh, grant you to do certain things, Um But as a business owner, if I was seeking advice, I would look for the individual experience uh, from a planner. Hey, fellow business owner, if this topic and value-packed short video has resonated with you at all and you want to dive deeper into being a full-stack business owner, check out the full episode by clicking the link on your screen or in the description right now.